Hello, dear students. Welcome to another lecture of uh, clinical toxicology. Uh, in this topic, we will be talking about food poisoning. Uh, these are my learning objectives. Uh, we'll start with the definition of food poisoning. Um, according to the CDC, food poisoning is a food contamination uh, with any foreign materials. That, that could be microorganisms such as bacteria, viruses, or any other toxic substance that make the food unfit for consumption. Uh, types of food contamination could be uh, physical, chemical, biological uh, agents, which is the most common type. According to the CDC website, um, it estimates that 48 million people um, get sick from foodborne illnesses and uh, around 128,000 are, hospi uh, are hospitalized and 3,000 die each year. For the classifications of uh, food poisoning, it starts with uh, microbial food poisoning, chemical food poisoning, plant food poisoning, and animal food poisoning. Starting with chemical food poisoning, it includes any materials that be added to the food and cause the toxicity, such as insecticides, uh, solvents, food additives. Um, plants, uh, consumption of poisonous plants such as uh, poisonous mushroom, uh, datura seeds, datura fruit with seeds, and uh, castor beans, uh, some other fruits, and fungi. Uh, animal food poisoning includes like um, consumption of uh, poisonous substance. Uh, or creatures such as fish, and there are several kinds of um, poisonous fish around the world, uh, around 300 species. The main topic of this lecture would be the bacterial food poisoning. Uh, two types of bacterial food poisoning, infective, which includes the Shigella and Salmonella as examples, which in, in, uh, defines ingestion of food contaminated with a living organism. Uh, toxic, when it happens that a food is contaminated with previously formed toxins. Examples for that would be staphylococcus poisons, uh, or staphylococcus toxin uh, poisoning, or botulinum toxins. Botulism is a rare but a very severe uh, disease. It's caused, uh, the cost of organism is called stridium botulinum. These are kind of anaerobes. It produces a kind of exotoxin, which is the most powerful and lethal toxin uh, known um, since history. There are many different exotoxins and variants. Uh, characteristically, characteristically, these toxins are um, heat labile, so it's de it destroyed by heat. And it is very common after ingestion of con contaminated canned food, especially home-made food. It's very rarely to happen uh, for stored, uh, store bought food, but it, it happens. Uh, there are different types of botulism. Uh, the most common type is the foodborne botulism, which is a, a main uh, topic in this lecture. Infant botulism, it happens when uh, babies uh, ingest food that has uh, the spores, the spores is, will fulminate and um, grow inside the stomach of the baby due to immature, immature enzyme development inside the stomach and, and the release of uh, botulinum toxin wound which happens by contamination um, of some uh, of any injury or open wound with uh, the spores of the organism the mechanism of action is a neuro, it is a neurotoxin it interferes with the release of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction which leads to characteristic muscle paralysis the manifestation uh, usually starts between uh, 12 to 48 hours. It includes uh, nausea, vomiting, constipation, abdominal distension, and pain. Uh, the muscle weakness uh, starts in a descending manner. And when it affects the cranial nerve, manifestations uh, will be in the form of dysarthria, dysphagia, dry mouth, and blurred vision. Uh, later, with the disease progression, uh, generalized muscle weakness happen, leading to paralysis of the uh, neck and respiratory muscles. 
Uh, other manifestation could be uh, paresthesia and loss of sensation, uh, disturbed eye movements in the form of nystagmus uh, or squint due to affection of the cranial nerves. Um, uh, other parasympathetic manifestation include urine retention, and if it happens to have fever, it will be very poor prognosis, which means failure of the thermostatic uh, center in the brain. It's not from the infection of the disease. Management include uh, routine investigations, lab investigations, uh, toxicological screening for the botulinia uh, toxins, which is the uh, only uh, method that we can use to the, uh, confirm the diagnosis with cholestrigium botulinium or botulism. Electromyocardiograph, it's uh, important to detect the muscle weakness. Um, general measures include gastric lavage. It, it has to be with protection of the respiratory passage for the fear of uh, aspiration pneumonia. So a cupped endotracheal intubation is required. Besides stabilization of the patients, including the ABC measures. Specific measures include a trivalent antitoxin, A, B, and E. Uh, usually the patients receive this in, as an intravenous uh, and through the intravenous route until the patient is free of symptoms. One of the very common differential diagnoses for botulinum toxin is atropine poisoning, and this would uh, the differentiation will be through history, bacteriological examination, and chemical analysis. We move now to the staphylococcal toxins. Uh, it is produced by Staph aureus. These toxins are therm thermostable exotoxins, so it affects the GIT. This is why it is sometimes uh, being referred to as enterotoxins. Um, usually the manifestation includes gastroenteritis uh, with fever, and it's usually high-grade fever. If we speak about infective food, poisoning occurs within um, due to the ingestion of food contaminated with living organisms such as a salmonella organism. Uh, one of the common mechanisms for that is the, um, the sheep and cattle harbor the organism in their intestine and muscle, and contamination uh, of this uh, with this organism leads to uh, handling of these meat or animal products may lead to the transfer of this organism to the inside of the human body, uh, and it could happen before or after cooking due to food handling. The manifestation include headache, fever, watery diarrhea, sometimes it progresses into dehydration, severe abdominal pain and cramp, and a lot of vomiting. The differential diagnosis for this case could be a heavy metal poisoning. Now we move to the viral food poisoning, which is a very common type of microbial food poisoning, around 30% of cases. And viral food poisoning is, very, is highly contagious. Uh, usually it happens by uh, viruses such as a norovirus, rotavirus, or hepatitis A virus. Uh, the consumption usually of contaminated fresh cut produce that is not being cooked, uh, that is contaminated with fecal traces, is also due to um, handling, food handling, or not washing the fish produce uh, thoroughly. Clinical picture uh, usually include self-limiting GIT symptoms. Uh, in most healthy individuals. But sometimes it could be very uh, lethal, especially with complications such as dehydration and renal failure. People with high risk for food poisoning include elderly patients due to um, decreased immunity um, and uh, organ failure in most cases, young children because of the immature immunity and not well developed, Patient with uh, uh, deficient immunity, either due to immunocompromised patients with immunocompromising disease or uh, receiving of um, uh, corticosteroid treatment, and also pregnant women. These are some advice for to prevent uh, food poisoning. And with that, we come to an end. Thank you so much for listening today, and wish you good luck.